Back up a little bit. We were talking about the safety stuff and working with uh, some of the stuff and what we do. Um, please make sure you pay attention. Jack, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the first bit will be on Jack Sparrow. The opening bit will start at 500. Oh, really? New Jersey, here we come. <laughs> 550, we got 550. 600. A grand. Alright, what was that? Two grand. Two bucks. 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 <laughs> All right, like we were saying when we started, guys, um, pay attention to the safety stuff when you're tearing, be it the TVs, whatever you come across. If it's got a warning sticker on it, listen to it. If you don't know how to take it apart, you're worried about what's inside it, get a hold of somebody who might know, or get on the forums and ask us. We can get a hold of the people to find out. Some of the older stuff that you can get your hands on, some of them have mercury switches in it, so you start playing with hazmat kind of stuff. You do not want to release this stuff in your shop, trust me. Um, so pay attention to the safety stuff. Wear your safety gear, um, gloves, face shields, Whenever you're messing with this stuff, if you're grinding or cutting, trust me, you don't want to have to pull little slivers of metal out of the out of your eyes. Um, personal note, on the back side of the sniper rifle, the piece of brass that's on there is an old Zelgen symbol off my drum kit. I had missed a piece of brass about that big, real nice and, and thin. Three o'clock in the morning, I found it again in bare feet. Okay. Trust me, you don't want to have to sit there and grit your teeth while you pair, grab a pair of... Uh, um, channel locks to pull it out of the bottom of your foot. Not something I care to repeat. But like we said over in the other over other room when we started in the wrong place, um, we hear it a lot. Hey, I want to do steampunk, but it's too expensive. It looks really cool, but I can't afford it. I'm probably wearing a grand total if you disregard the clock, a grand total of about ten dollars. Breastplate itself is a BMX breastplate for riding BMX uh, bikes. All right, found it in a junkyard down in Galveston for three dollars. Old shoulder pads are what's up underneath. From I think it was a garage sale we found out for a quarter. Um, the auto lights, really cool lights. Auto parts store, car bling, is all it is. Um, go in, cut the the 12 volt adapter for the car, and rewire it just a little bit and put it mounted to a, a battery and the side drape battery goes in a little glass block uh, and that's all there is to it now you yeah, can light up and, and when you go into the rave to do your oons oons and everything <laughs> lights up um, another cheap build another cheap build right here this one was less than ten dollars as well so. wow um, <laughs> follow the bouncing barrels. The most expensive thing on this was the block of wood that I used to carve out into the stock. Everything else is garage sale or junk mint finds. Um, plastic for scrap that you can pick up at a lot of plastic stores, they're just throwing out because the cuts are too small for most industrial purposes. Uh, old lightsabers picked up at garage sales. There's well, three lightsabers like. that make up the scope and a Nerf gun scope. Uh, that happened to kind of fit, sort of, in the middle of it all. Does that mean you're not a Jedi? I've <laughs> <laughs> never claimed to be a Jedi, and you're drunk. But the three Jedis we took it from were nice enough to give us a lightsaber. Um, this nice little glass bobble on the back here is a fuel filter out of a 1948 Dodge picked up for a quarter at a garage sale. The extending barrel that everybody's doing and awing at. 
This was another, I think that was a dollar fifty at a garage sale. It's a repurposed gutter cleaner that screws onto a garden hose. <laughs> <laughs> if it's broken, they no longer wanted it. You dremel off the tip, make it nice and pretty, and all of a sudden you have an expanding barrel and a seven foot sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> How about the clothes hanging? That's part I think the coolest. The um, nice little heat shroud right here. This was actually off of a clothes hanger for a car to go window to window in the back. All that is is a nice little rubber piece that they wrap around to keep the clothes hangers from sliding around. Cut it in half and lay it on there. Fits on perfectly. A little drop of super glue will hold it in place for the rest of the life. So most of the art in steampunk is making it look expensive. <laughs> um, we'll start mm -hmm. and time consuming. That's where the, the big investment is, is in time. What we found in the DIY community is, especially with weapons, it usually starts out as a progression. Usually it'll start out with Nerf guns, spray painting your Nerf guns, um, and inevitably, uh, inevitably it starts out with the Nerf Maverick. Has anybody got one in here? Oh, we almost got away with it. Um, we're actually making a cannon that will fire Nerf Mavericks. <laughs> um, no, the Nerf Maverick's a cool gun to start with. Uh, one of the secrets we tell people when, we, when you're going to go to paint the, the Nerfs is before you pull the sides off and all that, get pictures of it. When you pull the side off, take pictures and take pictures of each step. So a week from now, after everything's spray painted and looking all ooh shiny, when you go to put it back together, you can remember how the guts go in there. Okay? One little trick that we, we use all the time. Then the progression usually after that is taking the Nerf weapons and starting to attach things to them. Most of the Nerf guns have a lot of room inside where you can run screws and bolts through and you're not going to mess with the actual moving and functioning parts. Um, is that good? Um, then the next step up is you start building from, from the ground up, doing everything from the stocks, barrels, um, candlestick holders to make your, your, uh, your scope. Um, it's like we were talking about a little bit last night in the one-on-one panel. Um, your traditionalists and your purists will say, well, hey, they didn't have PVC pipe back then, or they didn't have this, they didn't have these composite uh, materials. The problem is, is, yeah, that's all fine and cool, but if I did this weapon out of what would have been used in 1880, 1890, that weapon would weigh about 80 pounds. Because it'd be solid brass, solid hardwoods. Yes, it looks pretty if you're going to keep it on a table. If you want to walk around the con with it and have people go, ooh, shiny, let me get your picture, it doesn't work so well. So we do do, do do, do do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just kicking in. Yeah. Um, so we do use a lot of um, composite materials in our builds. Um, the bipod on this one, one of my favorite stories. Um, is an, is an actual M14 bipod found in the bottom of a box at a garage sale for 25 cents. It was the fastest quarter that man had ever made in his life. <laughs> um, going through the garage sale, I had looked in that box, looked right over it. Um, my mother-in-law, I heard that. And all I hear is, what is this? About the time it got snatched out of her hand. I went really, grabbed it, threw the quarter at the guy, and ran for the van uh, before he realized what he had. Um, these usually run about $75 a pop. So if you come across one at a, at a garage sale or at a thrift store and they just don't happen to know what they have, grab that sucker. You didn't have that M14 at the garage sale. Oh, no, I'd have had that too. <laughs> <laughs> Two quarters. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Another 50 cents. That's the kind of stuff, so pay attention when you go garage sailing, pay attention to what's in the bottom of the box and stuff, and, and look at it from a different point of view than, what, oh, it's just junk. When you go into, you know, we tell everybody, going into Home Depot now is completely and totally ruined for us, because it's like going to a toy store. Um, the priceless part is when the lady at the front asks you, what are you going to do with all these odds and end parts, and you tell her I'm building armor out. <laughs> the look on her face is priceless. Um, buying a vacuum cleaner and informing them death ray. Flamethrower. You'll see on our automator cuffs, um, all we did, we made mounts for our cell phones. 
The speakers that are inside you can pick up at Best Buy or any place that, that sells the small electronics. The best ones to get are the USB rechargeable ones, so all you have to do is plug it into your laptop to recharge it. You don't have to mess with batteries. And you can walk around with your own soundtrack when you're shopping. And yes, I do use this when I go to thrift stores and listen to Glenn Miller, and it really throws people. <laughs> um, if you really want to make them nervous, walk into a restaurant li listening to the Imperial Death March. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yes, I do have it on. <laughs> <laughs> this is something you really wouldn't expect, but try in places like Tuesday mornings and Ross and go to the electronics. You'll find speakers and things like that for five dollars. Dirt cheap. You guys hear that? Tuesday morning and Ross, sometimes we'll have these type of speakers and they're dirt cheap, five dollars. Big Lots sometimes gets a hold of them too. Yeah. Big Lots is a great resource for buying old junk. Mm -hmm. So are you guys uh, you were mentioning a shop? Is this one group or organization or Different groups, or is there a name, or where you guys are? We're the crew of the airship Isabella, mm -hmm. uh, and our sister ship, the Neo Dulcimer. Um, we are a performance slash prop building crew. Um, uh, our headquarters is in Galveston, um, but we have crew in Galveston, Austin, San Antonio, and Kansas. My first officer is part of the Wichita, Kansas contingent. Um, and yeah, this is what we have no socialized, this is what we do. Uh, oh boy, Jack has another is, is, that, is your Galveston location, <clears throat> is it ever open to the public? Or it's just our shop. Visit or? Um, we don't mind visitors coming by the shop, and we love having people come by, and we'll show them tips and tricks and put them to work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we don't have our, most of our shop and stuff we do when we're not at conventions, we do online. It's on Etsy and on uh, eBay. When we build studio, you know, we build stuff. <laughs> We have a website, we'll have cards at our table out front. Um, you can do a Google or Yahoo search for Airship Isabella and the first 12 pages that come up are, are all of our pages on our Facebook and website and all that. If you go to our website, there's a little bar on the side that says forum. Go on the forum, register on the forum and you can ask us questions and we have discussions amongst all of us all the time on there where we're talking about the different stuff we're building and, and how to build and you like I said you can ask hey I'm Cap I'm trying to get this paint to stick to this material and we'll give you guys some of the websites that we use that you can find out information on what will weld with what or what paint will stick on what and how to do it and on that note you don't need to necessarily worry about restricting yourself to steampunk with this mm -hmm. either no. we've all been into all aspects of costuming for years and years and years for example i think there's one of us up here right now who eh, he's wearing goggles he's a steampunk <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've all been in the community for a long time had a lot of costuming experience so feel free to drop any question out there about a build or costuming we've got seamstresses on our crew and answer questions on that as well so feel free to abuse our forums all the time some of our members are members of the 501st and 405th for the Star Wars and the Halo guys. Um, some of us are in the process of building our Star Wars gear. Um, so like my first officer said, we do vacuum forming and all that kind of stuff as well. And if we don't know the answer to a question, we'll find out for you. We, we've got the contacts um, to, to find out that information for you. Um, you want to go to You are full of energy. I'm not awake yet, man. <laughs> you need more Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we can do a little bit of leather work. Uh, the leather working, um, it is an it's required skill. It takes practice. Um, there's a lot of, you can go on YouTube and pull up a lot of videos showing you how to do different things. Same way with the vacuum forming, same way with the working with plastics. Again, Pay attention to your safety stuff. A lot of some of the plastics become uh, toxic when you heat them up. PVC so, is one of those that every cosplayer out there uses, and half of them don't realize that you're dealing with some serious harsh chemicals in that. You need to be wearing a respirator if you're ever working with PVC. So please, if you don't know, go find out. We like every single one of you and want to see you back at the next convention <laughs> showing us your cool stuff. Um, on the leather work, like I said, there's all kinds of YouTube videos out there. Um, Go by your local candy store. They usually do workshops and classes. Come to our workshops. We're having one tonight and tomorrow. 
um, and we'll show you the basics of how to work with leather. Um, it's not as hard as everybody makes it out to. It's actually relatively easy, and it's a lot of fun. You can come with some really cool stuff. And like my first officer said, you, yeah, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be steampunk. Um, a lot of the cosplay stuff, you can do some really half of our times building armor and stuff based off anime. Assassin's Creed gear is absolutely awesome in real life. <laughs> yes. Um, one of the things we have found on our weapons is if you're going to custom do your stocks, instead of using, even though it's cheap, the yellow pine, it's cheap. People got it all over the place. You can go by any place that's building houses and grab it out of their junk bins. The only problem is it's a really soft wood. So if you're loading it and offloading it out of your vehicles, going to conventions, if, it, if you've got, like um, she was saying, if you've got fine scale work cut into it, it will break easily. And it also dings and dents really easily. Um, like with the sniper rifle, we have to be careful now because I've got autographs all over my sniper rifle. Um, it's real easy. If you drop it, it will get marked. So if you're going to do a, a, a gun stock, our recommendation is use a harder wood, oats, uh, walnuts, mahogany, so like it's a little bit more expensive, <laughs> but it will last longer and you'll be more happy when you're, you're done with it. You can um, also use something along the lines of shellac to give it a nice hard finish. It'll resist damage a little bit better like that. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Nice piece of wood, Cap. These are gun stocks. And what we've done is our uh, chief medical officer, uh, Dr. Nightshade, makes these in his shop. And what these are for is somebody who doesn't have the tools to, to do the woodworking. Um, you can buy one of the stocks and then you attach the rest of the gun yourself for ready-made stocks. Um, in fact, one just like this he's using for his Boba Fett uh, blaster for his Fett armor. Um, he got the, the gun at one of the Toys R Us cut the, the cheap, cheesy plastic stock off and is mounting one of these to it to give it that ooh, shiny look. <laughs> um, the, the metal along the back, car trim. Auto parts stores are your friends. Remember, same thing. Go in there not looking at it. Oh, this is a piece for a car. You're thinking in your head, hey, that'll look really cool on my gun or that'll look really cool on my armor. Um, the, uh, ooh, shiny. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah, we got a room full of magnifying glasses. <laughs> um, on our mask, one of the tricks that we came up with is on our Acer masks, these guys got tired of me yelling orders with my mask on and them going, huh? What? What'd you say? It sounded like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Because yeah. <laughs> you really can't understand really, really well what I'm saying when, you know, hey, give me a mountain doing a cigarette. No! Um, what we did was at Halloween, we went and got one of the voice changers. Nice. <laughs> um, it does have the setting where you just get the microphone speaker so they can, and I just ran it up into here um, where they can hear what I'm saying. And also, if you want to be really cool, you put it over on the alien and go walk around around the conventions about 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Lots of fun. Especially if you're going to hide around the corner and talk to some of the con kids who are not really sure where you're coming from or if you're real. <laughs> What's on the back of your arm? Is it? <laughs> you know what story has to be told because the back of your arm has been asked about, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so everybody knows the firefly stickers. Yeah. In that spot, and this is another thing, when we tell, when people start building this, when uh, he's part of the, the glare from the bald head, um, when people, we tell people when they're building your armor, once you build it, put it on, all of it, and walk around your house all day. Cook in it, watch TV in it, go to the bathroom in it. Okay? The convention is not the time that you want to find out that it takes you 20 minutes to run to the bathroom, and another five minutes to get in your armor, and you have to have somebody help you get out of it, and they're at the table 20 minutes that direction. You're going to look funny in the bathroom doing this. Okay? Um... Make sure you can get out of it to go tinkle potty. Go out into public places, like go to the malls, go to stores and stuff like that, because you also want to see if people run into you, what will happen. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> what she's talking about is on the back of this armor, and the Volantis was there in the inception stages, and got to see the swaths of destruction. 
And those of you who have not seen little Whitney, my, our, our little counterpart over here, she used to have to duck behind my armor when I turned around. Um, we thought it was a good idea. It looks really cool. We put a lamp on the back of this thing. And it had all these pipes going everywhere, and it had glass on it, and it was, ooh, shiny. Don't sell yourself short. It wasn't just a single lamp. It was an entire lamp store strapped to it. <laughs> it wasn't that big. Um, but since everybody's at a convention, you guys all know what the hallways look like out there with Skittle kids everywhere. And I'd be sitting there doing talking to somebody, and I would turn and talk, and then I'd turn around, and there'd be a swath of destruction of dead <laughs> So, you know, have some idea when you're building your armor that you're going to be in confined spaces, moving through crowds, and what kind of damage and destruction you're going to leave behind you as you move through the crowd. Um, the point that we actually took it, we finally said, that's it, we're done, we're taking it off. We staged an assassination attempt on Greg Ayers. If anybody you guys know Greg Ayers, oh, yeah. he's a voice actor. He was teaching his stage combat class, and we staged a mock assassination attempt with the Airship Isabella crew acting as Secret Service. Well, our plant pulled a gun, somebody yelled gun, I grabbed Greg, bent him over, started to push him out of the room like we were supposed to, and the poor lady that he was teaching got just a little bit too close to the armor as we went through, and we weren't playing. Well, I come walking back out after we got done doing said little play, and she's sitting there holding her hand with blood running down her hand. And I was like, oh, sweetie, what happened? And I looked down, there's blood all over the side of my armor. She <laughs> accidentally caught part of my armor as, as I went through, and I felt about this big. Um, the blood stains were cool, <laughs> but I felt bad for hurting her. Um, so wear your armor, get, you know, kind of think ahead a little bit on moving around in a crowd and what it's, you know, the problems that's going to bring up with what you're wearing. Also, trust me, guys, if you're going to be in this stuff for 12 to 18 hours at a convention, you want to be comfortable. Okay? Your friends want you to be comfortable. <laughs> um, so make sure you wear it so you know where it moves and how it pinches and you're able to, to do what you want to do at a convention or even sitting down becomes an issue. Um, so pre-wear your stuff. I, I, the guy's not here, but uh, I remember Mr. Delacruz having uh, to answer to some police about uh, 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 a... Uh, with a flamethrower. The rainbow hippie with a flamethrower. Uh, yeah. I, uh, the what? I thought it was the T. Um, he, he had the T. It was, it was the test drive of the T-Pack and the Mad Hatter. And, uh, you tell it better, sir, so yeah. I'm just reminding you. Dela Cruz alter ego, Dave Atunes, um, had built, and for those of you who have not had a chance and or the misfortune of experience the steampunk Mad Hatter, um, he has a tea pack that actually serves tea. It's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Unless your law enforcement have no idea what you're looking at. Um, <laughs> My little brother was walking around with said T-Pack, test driving it, doing what we do to make sure that it worked and everything moved the way it was supposed to. And all of a sudden, law enforcement showed up that they had gotten a 911 call that there was a rainbow hippie walking around with a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> oh so if you, hear, if you hear us call Captain Delacruz the rainbow hippie, now you know why. Um, and that does also bring up another point that one of our fellows ran into... Uh, Ben Hamby of the Sky Dogs. Ben has a flame, wrist mounted flamethrower that will actually throw a 10 to 20 foot shot of flame. It is an active, honest to God, flamethrower. And he was doing the same, the same panel, doing the DIY panel. And of course, all of us being uber geeks the way we are, said, Yeah, we want to see it. So the entire panel gets up, goes out in the parking lot, and he proceeds to fire off shots with it. A couple minutes later, law enforcement showed up <laughs> and proceeded. He came about that close to actually being put in handcuffs as for building a weapon of mass destruction. Now, where was this? This was in Texas. <laughs> oh, that's why I got a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, we've yeah. 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 So, yes, please. Be, it is cool to build this stuff, and yes, we have the knowledge and the experience to build stuff that actually works. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> and if you do, make sure you go way out in the woods where nobody can see you. Put <laughs> it to YouTube because we want to see it. Yeah, 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 videotape and send us a copy. <laughs> um, so please be careful.
Huh? So please, when you're building your stuff, make sure you pay attention to the laws in your area because with the state of things the way they are today, you're liable to get in a lot of trouble and you're just building an ooh cool shiny that I, like we're in the process of building Salem's Revenge, which is a flamethrower. Um, you can get in some serious trouble and end up looking at federal kind of, of problems if you're not careful. Yeah, because that reminded me when I was a kid, of course, you know, my, my family's always been hunters, and so my dad had an old scope from his uh, gun that he had given me, and I used to run around at school with the scope, and I'm thinking nowadays, <laughs> We go all over the country, and the reason we are such a tight-knit crew is because we fly nowhere. Because I am not going anywhere near an airport with that. Okay? So keep that in mind when you're building the stairs. Problem, John? Gun envy? Uh, yes, ma'am. Do you have grants on your form for gun twirling? Not yet, but we, we should work. <laughs> the, the secret to gun twirling is being bored and wanting to look cool. <laughs> And having your friends willing to run when the gun comes out of your hand and chases them across the shop. <laughs> Flying with um, your with weapons like that. Um, how do you do it? We don't. We don't. <laughs> no. How would I do it? Okay. We have been told is that you can get a hold of the powers that be, Department of Homeland Defense, at the airport. And you can call and say, hey, we're a theatrical group. We're going to be transporting um, mock weapons. And they'll give you all of their regulations on transport. You have to have in cases it says theatrical weapon, non-firing. There's a whole list of yeah. what you have to do. Now, the real skinner to the whole thing is not only do you have to contact the airport at point A, Point B too. You have to contact the point B, and if there's a C, D, and E, you've got to contact them as well, and let them know that you're transporting said mm -hmm. stuff. The next um, round. Just because I guess like when I transport my regular weapons, it's a lot easier if you're going to be somewhere and you know where you're going. UPS it. Mm -hmm. You can't shoot to the hotel. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. I have you know my guns. I, oh, yes. When I fly to Vegas, I UPS my guns. Yeah. So that they're at my guns. Online, as long as you have an FFA, what we're going to be doing for hopefully, if the numbers stay up and you guys help us, um, we'll be making a New Jersey trip to uh, Steampunk World's Fair. Um, Javran and myself were talking about doing that exact thing, putting our weapons and everything and shipping them up to New Jersey. Make sure you get insurance. But also on that, on that same note, be ready if you get there and your gear doesn't show up and you don't have your stuff. So it's, 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 it's a toss-up on how much you're willing to, to ship your stuff for. Um, Javier brought up one thing on a lot of our, on a lot of our gear. The plastic piece on the, on the top handguard on my automator cuff is the backpack off of a firefighter rescue ranger action figure. Okay? A um, little bit of spray paint and rub and buff. If any of you don't, has everybody here heard of Robin Bob? No. Oh, you need to go get some. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, um, Texas Art Supply, if you're in Texas, Michaels. Um, now, if you do go online, online they carry more colors than they usually carry in the stores. Okay? Um, but it's a wax based uh, material. Put a little bit on, you know, on your finger on a brush. It's a lot fun to put on your fingers. You get to be five again in finger paint. Um, and just sit there and work it in. And you can actually take the rub and buff after it dries a little bit and start buffing it out with a, uh, a soft cloth. And you can almost make it shine to the point where it looks like polished metal. You can get a mirror finish out of a rub and buff just by rubbing it with your fingers and then with a sock afterward to shine it up. Um, it's a wax-based paint. Now, it is slightly toxic if you ingest it. Don't so eat it. don't lick it off your finger. <laughs> don't go back to being five again. Oh, <laughs> storm! 
Or you'll end up acting like that. <laughs> Is that what happened? We like to assume yes. Yes. Uh, Food coloring. It's not bullshit. <laughs> Isn't that called pirate huffing? Yes. Yeah, okay. So yeah, Rub and Buff is your friend. The other thing that you guys want to invest in, trust me, is a Dremel tool. Dremel is your friend. Ah, oh, hail the mighty Dremel tool. Um, we spend a lot of time on our Dremel tools, and we spend a lot of money on bits, pieces, accessories, and ooh, cool shinies that come out for the Dremel tool. Um, it's definitely a tool that you'll want to get. Um, if you have the chance, there's a uh, drill press stand for the Dremel tool. Um, it costs about $40 or so. Make the investment and get one. It's worth it. Um, but that's what we use on all of our stuff. Oh, for right. example, I use two tools on this. A scroll saw for the, so the stock, and everything else was done with the Dremel tool. All of the lightsaber hacking, all of the bodging of all these pieces together, uh, the fine sanding on the stock as well, all of that was done with the Dremel tool. You can pick up rechargeable ones with two batteries right now at Walmart for 20 bucks. What does it look like? Um, the Dremel tool? Yeah. If you stop by our table, I'll show you ours. Ours is in the, in the toolbox. It's just a small little piece, about like that big, and it's a high-speed motor. And you can get all kinds of attachments to go on it. You can also get a hose attachment with a pencil grip so you can do fine scale work with, with the Dremel tool. <laughs> Now, uh, the uh, $20 rechargeable version won't get you through a whole hell of a lot of projects, um, and uh, it does have some serious issues with power. Um, it chews through the batteries, and if you're working with a really hard substance like a lot of metals out there, it won't be able to chew through them very easy, but if you're working mostly with plastics, that's not a bad one to go through. Um, there is a Dremel 4000 series right now. Which is a hundred bucks. Yeah, a hundred bucks is steep, but it comes with a bunch of attachments. It comes with separate grips, so you can actually get a stylus grip going on it. It comes with the router, the whole nine yards, and a nice little box that makes it all pretty and shiny. Um, no, Dremel's not paying us. No, we wish. Um, if there's any Dremel representatives out there, come talk to me. Yeah. Um, but the Dremel 4000 series is definitely worth the investment because it will carry you through just about any project out there. Can you plug that in the wall? Yes. Um, if you, and we, all of us love Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight is our friends, they have nice cheap tools, yep. take it from me, and yes, I'm going to say this, and if Harbor Freight wants to call me, I'll tell them the same thing. Do not go buy the cheap Dremel tool accessories from Harbor Freight. All right, take it from me, sing those things past your head when they go flying off at 17,000 RPMs, because they come apart, is not a good time unless you just have me watching it. Um, so don't waste your money. All of us have done it trying to, to cut costs. If you're going to go buy, I mean, you're talking about something that, that's spinning to 17 to 20,000 RPMs. The 4,000 goes up to 35,000 RPMs. So there you go, you're going to 35,000 RPMs. You don't want that piece coming apart. That's exactly three and a half times the speed of death. <laughs> <laughs> so go spend the money and make sure it says Dremel on it. Go to Home Depot and go get the actual Dremel accessories. I mean, I go buy, we buy a lot of our tools at Harbor Freight, but we don't buy the Dremel, the Dremel accessories, the off-brand accessories at Harbor Freight. You're just going to be wasting your money and liable to take an eye out with the thing. Or the cheap weather punches. Yeah, or the cheap weather punches, as Johnny Nell found out. <laughs> guys got questions? Please, ask questions. We got questions, we got answers. Um, wait, wait, this is directed at... Um, I wish I knew your name. So. Javel. No, no, the... Ha ha! No, me. Dr. Vale. Dr. Vale. Dr. Vale. Is this made yourself, your outfit? No, a lot of this is actually just pieced together from stuff I had in my closet. This was, uh, I had this altered a little bit. Uh, a friend of mine who got us sewing had it altered to fit me a little bit better. Other than that, this is all just stuff that I've had from various costumes I've had over the years. Uh, like I said, we've all been in the costuming community for a while. So <coughs> that's where I got most of this stuff. Okay. Don't lie, it's <laughs> So, how, how did you get started into the whole costume thing? That's what I dribbled Yeah, me was doing ring fairs and being in the SCA. Um, Javert and Amaranth are award-winning cosplayers on the cosplay scene. 
Um, as Dr. Rail was saying, they've done college skimming. Uh, our, our other illustrious Captain Deli crew uh, started basically the same thing, doing cosplay and uh, the airsoft world, shooting at his friends. <laughs> and then there was Jack. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get into costumes, Jack? Disguises. Disguises. Hey. <laughs> I thought they were calling me Smitty today. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anybody got any other questions? There was a time that I did disguise myself as the uh, as Barbosa. Cardinal of Rome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that man. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> Questions, guys? What, is, uh, what did you use for these uh, plates right there on your shoulder? These are all leather. Uh, all we did with leather on these is uh, went out and bought a, a single shoulder of leather, which is about $14. Um, comes with quite a bit more leather on it than this. Um, and cut it into rectangular sections. Off of that, we punched a bunch of all we did was cut them into rectangular plates and run a uh, edge embosser, uh, which is just a nice little hand rolling tool around the edge to get the print and punch holes in it to lace it together. Uh, a little bit of hot water, bending it, will shape it into a nice curved shape right there and uh, I'll make it hold that top edge. So this was just a little bit of an afternoon towards the work. To pick these out. For um, people native to Louisiana, I ordered from Candy Letter, and um, when they sent in my orders, they had a little handwritten note that if I had just called the New Orleans location, that they would have cut the shipping like a whole lot, so you don't have to pay as much. So just heads up, don't order straight offline. Call them. Did you guys catch that? If necessary, make a pilgrimage to Candy Letter. Oh, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, you, it is it, a wondrous place to go. It really is to give you a, a great idea of the whole leather working scene and get you to touch with a whole lot of new tools that otherwise you might not have seen. And the guys at Candy Leather are usually very helpful. Um, they're usually experienced leather workers and uh, can do a lot of projects right there at the store in their spare time. So they've got a lot more leather working experience than people who've got a lot of years in the scene. Um, a lot of the places for the uh, replica weapons you see us carrying, um, the live, or look like live weapons, um, is uh, repli uh, museumreplicas.com. Uh, you can go online and get weapons like this. They're the real weight, real size. I think they don't have firing pins in them, and they're non-firing. Um, but keep in mind, when they do come, they don't have the orange tips on the barrels. And I don't know about law enforcement in the nice state of Louisiana, but I know ours in Texas are trigger happy. And you do not want a real 45 stuck in your ear because you're walking around with one of these. Um, and on that note, for all you guys being con goers, if you get, when you get to on site, please go directly to the security desk and check your weapons. All right? A lot of times, as long as you've got them orange tipped and they know that they're, they're not live firing weapons, as long as you work with the security guys, they'll work with you. All right. Now, if you're going to make pilgrimages long distance to other conventions like Acon in Dallas, <coughs> make sure get in the habit of checking their weapons policies for the convention. Because people see us walking around with what we carry, we get knocked into a different category because we're guests. Um, a lot of times, even weapons like this, they won't even allow you to have as a general congoer. Honestly, okay. I don't think there's a single weapon on this table that ACOM would allow the general public to carry. Uh, they have some extremely strict rules on even the types of wood you can use. Um, so even the wood that we use on here, which is this nice soft pine, uh, is too hard for their standards. Uh, the hardest wood they'll allow you to use on your costuming is balsa. Uh, and that's costuming as far as weapons and armor. Uh, they're worried about people running into one another and the armor being too hard. They actually made me check my pyramid head helmet um, to make sure that I couldn't headbutt someone and kill them. <laughs> You're the one that was walking around in Ancon with pyramid head helmet? This is the one with the camera in the front, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was me. Amaranth Laurel, our, Laru, our commander at the desk, is the nurse. With a really eerie eye, yeah, oh that's her. Oh my gosh, okay. 
<laughs> yes, we all have alter egos, so don't talk bad about it. You never know what's behind you. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Dirty jokes? <laughs> no. no. I got dirty jokes. Oh, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> That's a nice count. What do you do with an elephant that has three balls? <laughs> you walk all, him, all ages panel. All you ages. walk him and pitch to the rhino. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jack, take care of that. Holy! Jack, take care of that. I know. Um, any other questions, guys? Come up with questions, guys. Or we'll dance. Or dance. Yes, dance. I'll shoot you. Dance break. <laughs> no, 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 dance, monkey. <laughs> We named the monkey Jack. Jack, Jack will, will, Captain Jack will give you some rum if you dance. Present it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see the color song. The wrong song was gone. Why all these guys stop by our table out there? We do have a modifications booth running all the time. If any questions happen to come out throughout the weekend, uh, we'll show you what we can do out there at the modifications booth. I have a question. How did you do this weapon? This weapon the, the is body of it mostly. This weapon is the lack of social life for our chief medical officer. <laughs> um, this is, and yes, the duct tape is supposed to be on there. It's not because it's not finished. This is a Fallout 3 weapon. So it's supposed to be built from odds, ends, and pieces. Um, along again, car light for the U Shiny. Um, and it's just different bits and pieces he had floating around his shop. And if you ever had a chance to see his shop, you would understand. Um, the, uh, the body of this was made out of a piece of an old electrical casing off of some industrial component that he had laying around, which is another one of those good junkyard finds. Also known as a garage door opener. You know how they keep it on the rack? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. Um, the... Uh, Nice big uh, ammo chamber off of the uh, bottom of this was a respirator off the gas mask. Um, obviously the stock was cut on a scroll saw with a couple of hole saws to uh, give it that nice ported look. Uh, again, auto trim. This is actually door trim. Really? This is, this is a door trim that they're not in here, are they? You can get from the bottom of those doors. <laughs> <laughs> this is a door trim for when you go from one room into the other underneath the door. Uh, another oh, yeah. nice little auto zone find is... Uh, on the side here, these nice little pieces are uh, these chrome sticky decals you can get for the sides of your car. Um, you can get a pack of them for about nine bucks. You get a pack of uh, three to six for around nine dollars. And they make excellent additions to everything. The barrels on this thing were copper piping. Uh, bits of old wall hanger swords that he had laying around for the uh, flash suppressor there. Uh, Really, it's just a junk build. Um, everything on it was cobbled together from something laying around in a pile. Um, that's the way a lot of us do a lot of our gear. Um, if we see something shiny in a dumpster, we won't even bother stopping the car. We'll just kick the door open, dive out, and start running. <laughs> um, we, aren't, we aren't above getting dirty to get some of these parts. Um, it's, it's a lot cheaper. I'd rather spend my money on you know, soap and shampoo after I've managed to get the parts, then spend it buying the parts new if they're just going to be you have, and take up more room in a junkyard. If you have younger kids or younger siblings who, you know, don't play with their G.I. Joes anymore or their, their action figures, don't throw them away. If you get a chance on the DIY table, there's another pistol. The top part of it is the cockpit off of one of the G.I. Joe tanks that we gutted out and put the electronics inside to run the lights and everything. This thought of the stickers you see on our guns are G.I. Joe stickers that never just happen to make it to the G.I. Joe toy. Another thing that we've discovered recently here that's been kind of useful is look at McDonald's every once in a while when you're rolling through. Look at the kids' menu. <laughs> Check out the toys. <laughs> because sometimes they can get some really cool toys. Like uh, this nice little piece right here, I believe, was actually formerly a McDonald's toy. Uh, that one came off the uh, firefighter rescue ranger. Right. Um, we've, uh, we found nice little Nerf guns that come as McDonald's toys. They did a nice little line of tiny, tiny, tiny Nerf you guns. Have one, one you had one on your belt, was it? The one on my belt? Yeah. 
that one. And you didn't bring it. No, I, I, I didn't bring it, but it's at the table. If anyone wants to stop by our booth, we're located right next to the airship in Cabela. We let them hang out with us. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> you invite us. It's <laughs> furry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check out our booth. We have also a lot of uh, a lot of our weapons are behind there for if anybody wants to take a look. We're more than happy to go. Hey, play around. Shabami, uh, if you want to drag some of your pieces up here, uh... Lucian knows more about this one than me. It, it's, um, it's basically like um, it's a mini Gatling. It's basically it was uh, not a Nerf gun, but check out the off brand. It's, it's off -brand company those off-brands, they're they're a little bit more non-recognizable, cheaper, and it has like the coat of paint, rub and buff, and all sorts of fun things. We're in the process of mounting lights onto it, but we didn't have enough time before this con, and we're checking out uh, we're checking out the auto parts. And it's thin. <laughs> 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 I've already tried it. <laughs> and one last note, guys. If you're out there and you're doing different conventions and stuff, and you come up to any of the, and this is my personal thing, and my deal to you and anybody who was in the one on one panel heard it last night, you'll hear it again. If you go up to any steampunk and you say, hey, can you tell me or teach me how you did this, or how did you do this, and how did you do this, and they hoard their gear and they don't want to show you or, or tell you and teach you, call me. All right? That's not what this community is about. This community is about sharing and getting farther with our artwork through sharing the knowledge and not having to reinvent the wheel. So if you come across groups like that, if they're rude to you and they kind of hoard their stuff and won't let you see it, you call me and we'll have a talk with them. Okay? Because that's not what we're about. All right? On that other note, if you guys get a chance, please stop by the table. We're going to do a shameless plug. We're running a raffle for some stuff. Um, one of them is a Tandy starter leather kit that runs about a hundred dollars. It's all the basic tools. Uh, one of my van braces is a set of goggles. Um, as it stands right now, I think the last body count we're still doing pretty good. Um, they put myself, and as far as I'm saying, myself is the our steampunk down here in the south up for knighthood at Steampunk World's <laughs> Fair, and we need all the help we can get to try and get a small contingent together to make it there to show the East Coast and the West Coast. That the South shall rise again. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yes. If you get on our, our Facebook page, um, we have started what's called SCARS, South Central Armada of Renegade Steampunk. It is a fleet. We offer and invite everybody. You can be a, just an individual member or your airship crews or engine crews, submarine crews. Join SCARS. Keep up with what's going on in the, in the central United States area. And it gives you a chance to talk to crews from all the other states. If you happen to be going to Oklahoma or Texas, say, hey, I'm going to be in Dallas this weekend, you'll be able to see up on there what's going on there so you can go hang out with all those crazy people from Texas. So, yeah. anybody got any last minute questions? Yes? How do you go about creating an Tonight, um, we, was it tonight? Yeah, I think it's tonight. We'll be doing a panel this evening called Steampunk 102, so you want to be an airship captain, you poor sucker. Um, <laughs> we'll go into a lot in depth detail on running a group, how to form a group. Um, you'll get to hear some of the captains talk about our stance on what it means and what it takes to be an airship captain and how to keep a group together and functioning. So, if you want to, that's a really long conversation. Um, so, you guys would meet us at that panel. We'll sit around and have a round table city discussion on what it takes to run an air crew. Yeah. <laughs> I like Captain Sky Miles. Uh, thanks, everybody. We appreciate listening. If you have any questions, come on our table. Are you brought a card with you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> took it off you. Yeah. Took all the video off.